to my knowledge, her specialty lied in being unseen and everything she did was for her family to better their lives. So opportunistic scavenging Crow kind of kneels down. I can't... As much as I would want to, I would... Can't give this person a... Well... Proper burial. They'll need to be burned. Yeah. So... What have we learned from this adventure? As Crow kind of stands up, still looking down at the remains of Hestia, but very clearly changing the subject. Careful where you step. Yeah, that um, uh, that the, the plague is trying to reach the surface and might already have. Also, um, I'd like to have your expertise in that, uh, Crow. Do you, do you think it uh, affects spirits as well? And they looked quite weird after after I called, called them. Uh, so Crow, Crow is in the gang, not the member of the Crows. Yeah, no, Crow, uh, Nathan. <laughs> we have too many things that are Crow-oriented right now. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing Crow's foot, I'm battered Crow, there's a member of the Crows, there's probably a death, who's yeah. a death uh, seeker Crow. Uh, the, one, the one who's shedding well, feathers. Yeah. 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 That's well, one member okay. of the crows, that's a person. But as they walk, they like leave this trail of black feathers. Yeah, I, I suggest we call them the pigeons now. Just for the symbol. <laughs> they just go around eating um. cigarette butts. <laughs> <laughs> Are those breadcrumbs? Okay, while well, Caroline's asking um Crow <laughs> I'm gonna go help Baska if he is not up already. Uh, he went. Uh, he went through a hole in the wall at oh, the lower basement, lovely. so he's finding his own him. way out. Yeah. He has my lantern. Okay. <clears throat> As I kind of turn to Sasha, recommendation for procedure: torch this place. Every square inch. Understood. Cave it in as much as possible as well. We can't have... people slipping below and we can't have things slipping above. I wish to be away from here. Yeah, it's, it's really no need to stay. Also, the floor might give in again, and I don't think we want that. Yes. We wouldn't want that, so let's just make our way outside. Hopefully, Basque will be out within the next few minutes, and we'll make our way back to the basement. As as you step outside, the first thing that you notice in the silence of the streets is the clattering of of hooves of the wheels on the cobblestones as three wardens in the full full regalia of the black of the black robes 
arrive in the hearse-like carriage, silently dismount. And a glance towards, and all three of them almost in unison, glance towards Battered Crow, and the heads cock in it, to the side. I am going to provide them with a detailed report of the number of bodies, the existence of two relatively passive ghosts, and one compelled relatively violent ghost that depending may still be under the effects of the Kambel or may be free from it at this time. As the three of them, again, all in unison, produce the lightning hooks at the moment dormant and not charged with the plasmic energy that flows through them, so they clutch to the floor and the three of them head inside, it's almost silently. Time goes on. Caroline and Battered Crow taking your leave. And as the blue coat detachment arrives, it ends up with Sasha watching as the building is ignited. Two members of the brigade of the brigade stand nearby, arms folded, just watching the building burn, but making sure that it doesn't spread to any of the nearby surrounds as crowds begin to gather in the streets, but you stand somewhat separate, silhouetted against the night by the what becomes a blazing inferno. As the smell of that red rot begins to fill the air as it burns. Smell almost like burning hair, pungent and almost offensive. And we're going to call the score there. So. Ragged Crow, Caroline. Battered we'll start crow. with Ragged. Battered Crow, sorry. Sorry, Ragged Crow. That I realised that they are nothing to do with this. It's just in my head. Battered Crow. Battered Crow, oh, where would you like to go? Where would you like to go? I think... Battered Crow would actually... Butter Crow's kind of a two-person individual right now. There's part of him that obviously wants to go take the edge off. Go down to Borrow Cleft. However, that side also knows that is the slope that led them astray last time. So, I think Crow's going to take a different approach for the first time in probably many, many years. He's... He's gonna attempt to push himself in a different direction in the form of obligations, I think. Okay. Finishing loose ends that he knows once he's fully in the fold, these loose ends he will, Nathan, will feel better if these loose ends are tied up. 
rather than letting them flap in the breeze without his existence anymore. Absolutely. I would say if you want, you can in, you can indulge vice with that, uh, but as it's not yet your vice, I'd probably say do a, a minus one die. Uh, we are. That's the okay. Yeah, so I'm minus one. Okay, and I think so. at this point, with. It being Hestia. I've got something. There. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I have an idea as well, but yeah. So I will attempt to indulge my vice at a minus one. Yeah. It's it's something new and different, but and also it's this one's personal. It's not quite so. one as you enter into bell with the crematorium the gates themselves open for you as if by themselves as if bidded as if by your bidding walking in and into the the lower basement down the old down an old stone staircase to multiple pools lining either side of pure plasm each one above which sits a metal lattice almost gurney like bed and one of them has the muslin wrapped body lying on top of it just the face shown the eyes closed in death, that of Hestia. The three wardens in attendance step to one side as if inviting you to enact the, the process of destroying the body completely. Crow nods and proceeds to feed the flames, as it were, but it does allow him to, underneath his breath, say his final goodbyes. And as he do is this this bed is lowered into the plasm and the flames begin to lick up engulfing the body and dissolving it to nothing the other three wardens leave as crow stands beside this pool staring into the nothing With Caroline. What would you like to do? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I mean I could try. Oh, loud, loud, loud. Oh yeah. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So, um, I think I could try to uh, find uh, his child's family, even if I only have a name. Um... And as you as you do, uh, as you make your way through the 
the streets of Char Hollow to one of the, the many, many densely populated buildings, overpopulated fam homes meant for families of three, four, five, now contain seven, eight multi-generational families. And knocking at the door, it's opened by a quite heavy set man with a large beard, more, which is likely out of lack of maintenance rather than a personal style choice. Opens the door, looks at you. takes in what he sees, furrows his brow a little bit. Um, Karen says, uh, greetings. Um, may I ask you if you know um, a young lady named Hestia or where I could find anyone who does. Oh no, that's too, yeah. I haven't seen her in days. As he opens the door, showing you inside, you see that multi-generational family all gathered around. Maybe you want to come inside. So he looks at you and knows from the look in your face, that this is not good news. As Sasha. Is there anything you would like to do? <clears throat> um, I probably would return to our, to our basement rendezvous and I'll be writing up a report on the investigation that just transpired and on the two convicts is that what we call them <laughs> um, I'd say uh, they'd be associates associates yeah. for now <clears throat> yeah Probably using uh, for the report for the investigation the ghost as the witnesses. Um, and as the night goes on, it's the early hours of the next morning when. You find yourself being roused, having fallen fallen asleep at the at the desk, with battered crow returning. Um. Okay, so um, this is, um, you can, um, you can choose to what you actually say. So oh, you can, so true. you can detail what actually happened, uh, but you can cover, cover for the wardens essentially, or you can throw someone under the bus. Wait, is this an actual thing? Hold on. Yep. Oh, so true. Where is it? Hmm? Uh, Throw some. I've, I, I think I've seen this. Throw someone under the bus. 
yeah, paperwork. Yeah. I'll be I'll cover for the wardens for now. Won't throw under anyone under the bus. So how are you covering for them? Um, I leave out what would be considered damning information. Hmm. Um, allowing somebody to die at the hands of a ghost. Oh, so true. Yeah, that. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. What? They were plagued already, I think. So. Yeah, they were. Know. Yeah, they were plagued already, but still, that's not a great thing for me to have done. That was kind of more... I wasn't aware it was going to be Hestia. I, yeah, of course, it's... Yeah, but I don't know any of that, but either way, I'll leave it out. Because I don't want to have bad rapport for my first report with you. <laughs> yeah, um, as you look through the... Sorry. Bust crow, as you look through the paperwork, as Sasha still kind of roused, you notice that there's discrepancies. To the best of the knowledge, uh, the unknown sole survivor was died whilst you were on the premises, yet any involvement directly seems to be coincidental at best, according to Sasha. I'm just gonna essentially note that, and it's not gonna change the question I ask, but it is going to be one of those things. I, I'm keeping record of that. <laughs> you say out loud? No, no, no. Uh, it, it, that's something... Crow's just going to make a mental note of. Yeah, Battered Crow will remember that, yeah? Yeah, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, I'll need to fill out my portion of the report as well. All right. Just... See if we can't get the other two in here to fill out their portion of it as well. Hey, uh, I have a question for you. I will... Just your opinion. Alright. Do you think this above-ground altercation, this is just an isolated thing, or...? At this point, Nathan kind of, uh, Crow kind of reaches into his pocket and he sets the spirit jar on the table. If he was to be believed, this is an unsettling new norm. Very well. He may still have a part to play. Nathan moves the jar from the desk and places it up on a shelf. Once... Hopefully I'm wrong on that and I can just dispose of this as needed. But right now... We cannot afford tossing away anything that might be helpful. Agreed. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. As Caroline, as the Dawn of a new day emerges. 
Is there anything you would like to do? Um. Hmm. I mean, yes. Um. What would she do? Um. Maybe. I think she would um, send uh, some sort of warning to um, spirits she's in contact with, one way or another, uh, to stay away from the um, the clusters of the of the plague and uh, the underground, if they can, and to keep an eye out uh, for. I don't know, a uh, case of people getting sick uh, in the surface. Mostly the last one. I uh, don't think they would listen to her for the pro- for first. As you... As everything alters around you, you take that shift and as your perception goes into that the ghost field. You are increasingly aware of almost a mirror image of yourself. Just out of the field of your view, it's that blurry peripheral. Appearance-wise, nearly identical. As Your dull friend manifests in much more physical form. As she looks at you, uh, and you look at her almost mirroring one another. You've been busy. Strange friends, the one who claims to be a friend to the dead. I have, I have to cooperate with the warden. Uh, that doesn't mean I trust him in any way. But right now, um, I don't think there's. All of this bad blood uh, matters in any way. What's happening is way, way more dangerous. You know the problem as much as I do. How do you set about defeating those that can, well, that know what you're going to do before you do? I'd say, like I always do, by making them think that what I'm about to do is stupid and, um, not going to cause them any harm until it does. You know, do it again. Well, who knows how well things will go? Maybe you'll join me here. Or maybe I'll get that body back. That that's mm. would be nice, actually. As long as you can promise me that you can just... I mean, I had a good run as well, more than I was supposed to have, so I'm, you know, grateful and everything. I mostly hope that... Uh, you won't get hurt in that clear current state of your energy. 
harder to defend myself. I'm not very well equipped for that kind of thing. I'm fully aware who you're calling friends these days. I'm staying, staying well away. <laughs> it's just... You remember the, the, the man came uh, from that cult? I just... I just hope he won't can come back. You know, he knows you here. Maybe we should, we should change location, you know? How about a uh, change of scenery? Where are you thinking? Leave Dosco? No, I'm not, not until I'm done with this. But there are all the bridges and uh, all the rivers. There is where always nowhere to find us. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't feel very comfortable waking up uh, with that painting on the wall every morning. Kind of gross, be be fair. Looking towards it, there's like streaks down it where you try to wash it away, but it's it's soaked into the wood. Yeah, it's It's disgusting. So, with a few possessions, obviously a an old porcelain doll among them. Where are you going to move to? Um, I don't remember where they are. I remember they are under a bridge, so I think the, um, Karen will, will take them uh, on the farther away from this place in particular uh, to one that is similar. Uh, so, uh, near water under a covered space. Absolutely. As far away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you look for a new place to call home. Um, um, Sasha and Crow. Is there anything else you would like to do? I I think at least on Crow's end, it would be placing... I would assume we have essentially a map of Duskfall in our Mm -hmm. basement. Yeah. I'd be marking the position of where the location we just burned down was. Kind of, um, you know, obviously we probably already have the quarantined areas sectioned out, you know, kind of general information, but yes. adding... Said that. The uh, Rag and Bone region of Crowsfoot in the northeast. So, with the, the building itself now, with a red pin denoting its location. And Sasha. Yeah. Is there anything you would like to do? Oh, um, as he pins that location, I say. It's an easy cut target, don't you think? I mean, it seemed pretty run down already. Yes. Uh... Opportunistic is certainly a word that comes to mind. That being said, 
However, we need to start hitting targets. We got to get to the center of this. And well, that was a good lesson in what we're dealing with. It doesn't really advance what needs to be done. Band-Aid solution. Because... That was... Quite frankly... Buildings like that... Are what? A hundredfold? Thousandfold in this city? In six towers alone. As you take something of a, a leave to consider this, we're going to have a brief flashback. Nathan, uh, a while ago, in, in hindsight, possibly a detrimental decision, which fortunately at the moment is unknown to any of your immediate superiors or colleagues with the escape from an assistance that you provided to the woman in question. As we roll back the clock, as you replay a conversation of what was discussed and sudden reminders of you from your own almost subconscious mind of those words once a sister always a sister as in a different time when Doskval didn't feel quite so empty in a in a night market tea house You sit opposite, or rather, Nathan sits opposite Rebecca. She say, takes a sip of tea and borrows her brow at the rather pungent taste of whatever fungus has been used to breed this particular strain. Hmm. Memorable, you could say. She places the cup down. So. You have a bone to pick with the Dinner Sisters, it seems. And I owe you information. What would you like to know? Nathan kind of pauses for a moment. I've, I have been inside their manor. I have seen certain things. And I find that they've taken someone. They uttered the phrase, once a sister, always a sister. Now, I'm not going to claim I don't understand that phrase. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. However, I considered that person a friend. And... I'm working on ways to make certain agreements more amenable. Uh, the word amenable there is twisted and contorted in its inclination. 
uh, by Nathan's voice. I'm looking at strings to pull, strings I can pull, loose threads, any information that I can use, whether it be a thread or the proverbial knife. question I have is, are you looking to get your friend back? Yes. And I know that is a tall, tall order. I have a few friends in quite high places, though. People that still listen to me. Uh, due to certain duplicity. But they definitely need more information before they can even begin to do anything about anything. The question is, have you really considered what was said to you? Once a sister, always a sister. What I understand is the family of the person was cursed. Of course, that phrase yeah. has been. Oh, I'm actually. Um, it's, it's a lot more natural. Your friend wants a sister, has throughout time, even before you knew them, been a Dimmer sister. Time is not linear. And as she asks the next question, you realize you don't remember. She looks you directly in the eyes and says, what was her name? You have just finished listening to this week's episode of Blades in the Dark, What Happens in the Dusk, part of the Domain Gaming, written and told by LifeSpark. A special thanks to you, the listener, and if you wish to continue supporting us, subscribe, like, and share. As always, comments are welcomed. Until the next chapter. You've heard the silent song. We all have the legend, guesses. Some foolishness about a world as it was meant to be. A city of ghosts. An illusion that you can begin again. How much would you give for silence?